Hello there good people, what is up? Welcome to this channel, my name is Marco and I am a self-taught programmer who recently changed career to become a full stack developer. This is going to be the second project in this video series of milestone projects. In particular today I will code a slugify function. I must admit this wasn't one of my first projects, it came a little bit later and you'll see why. To understand what a slugify function is or does, you first need to understand what a slug is and not the bug. It took me quite a while to figure it out because I wanted to learn it naturally, I didn't check online. Basically, a slug is strongly related to a URL and it represents a, a replacement for something that is not URL friendly. So maybe it has spaces, symbols, etc. This string, this replacement, gets formatted in a very particular way, usually. You can see it very often if you visit blogs or online newspapers. Uh, online articles, etc. Usually the URL goes something like this. You have the website, slash blog, slash post, slash something. That something is the slug, and it can of act as a unique identifier. But that term is commonly used for databases, where you have IDs or UIDs. You don't want to put IDs in the URL, because you might not want the users to know uh, particular pieces of information about your database. Or maybe because sometimes IDs are extremely long set of numbers and letters and they're not very URL friendly. So what do you do? You create a slug that can be used in the URL. And it usually takes the title of the blog post or the name of the product in your e-commerce website and it makes it URL friendly in a format that is called spinal case. Uh, when it comes to programming, there are a lot of standards. You might have heard of PEP8 in Python. Well, these standards, well, part of these standards specify uh, naming conventions. So how variables or function or classes should be named in that particular language. In JavaScript, for example, the common convention, the common naming convention is called camel case, where you have the first letter of each word being uppercase everything apart from the very first letter. In Python, you have something called the snake case, irony, where basically every word is separated by an underscore. Spinal case is where every word is separated by a hyphen or a dash. So for example, a title like 90s greatest hits is turned into 90s dash greatest dash hits. Now that we know what it's like is, we can start coding. And in the end, I will share with you what I have learned working on a project like this one. Let's get started. All right, so I have my file over here and my slugify function over there. It's empty for now. And now I'll start populating it. So what do I want to do? I want to use the split method. First of all, as a argument, I want to give it a title. Let's give it a title. Let's spell it correctly though. Now this title is going to be a string. And of course I put it title because more often than not you're going to use it with blog posts or anything that requires a title. So now this title, I want to split it. So I'm going to generate slug and then I'm going to say split it. Now as you can see here, when I use the split method, it's, uh, it's asking for a separator. Now this separator can be used as a string, so if I just do this, it's going to separate on an empty space. But it's very precise, it's one empty space. If my title has two empty spaces, it's not going to divide it, because it's looking for that particular pattern. How can I solve this conundrum? Which is something that often happens when you're dealing with uh, string manipulation. It's never literal. You don't want any literal things going into the pattern. You want to use regular expressions because regular expressions can help you dealing with this situation, basically dealing with all situations. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the double slashes like this, which introduces regular expression in JavaScript. I'm just going to say this symbol. This is the symbol for a space, an empty space. And if I put a plus like this, that means one or plus. So basically, if it finds one space, it's going to divide it. If it finds two, finds three, 
and so on. We can test it. I want to test it. So let, let's give it a, a simple string. Now this is a test with symbols. Let's save it and run it. Yeah, right. Because I need to return the slug. Sure. Let's return. Why not? Let's run it again. Test it. So now you see I have an array and I basically split the entire title, the phrase, the sentence. But there is a problem here. Now I don't want my slug to have symbols. And here I have a comma. Here I have a question mark, which is a big no no when dealing with URLs because the question mark actually means something for the URL. And here I have an exclamation point. So I don't like symbols. What do I do? I split on symbols too. What's the best way to do it in regular expression? I can use the pipe symbol, which means or, and I can use the capital W with a plus. The capital W means everything that is not a letter. So basically, I think the only thing that doesn't count in this particular case is the underscore. Everything else is, is included. So question mark, asterisk, you name it. Let's see if now this returns the value that I want. As you can see, it does, because I don't have the comma here, and I had it before. I don't have the exclamation and the question mark. As well, I don't have the exclamation point here. But now there is a little bit of a problem. I need to kind of clean it. Why? Because I have an empty one. I have I have an empty string in the in the in the array, and I don't want that. I can do this simply using a filter method. A filter method is one of these methods that works on a on an array, and what it gives me, I'm gonna have access to the single word, and I'm gonna filter it. So what do I do? I just want to trim the word because I want to get rid of all the empty spaces that I might have left. And this must be different from an empty string. So this basically removes all the empty strings in the array. Let's see if it works. Yes, so I don't have any empty spaces. It basically got rid of this, which is what I want. Now that I split the sentence, I cleared it, I filtered it, I have to join it. Let's join it. It's very simple. I provide a symbol. What do I want to join it with? It's going to be an iPhone or a dash so that I can generate the spinal case. Let's see what returns from this function. All right. This is what returns from this function. And this is my Slack. Now, I want to test this. Writing tests is always a good thing, especially when you're learning with this small script because there are not uh, th there is not much logic going behind it so that you can really you know test it confidently so i'm just going to import a test that i wrote okay this is the test it basically just takes an input which is the actual sentence to be you know you want to create this lag what i expect from this function to return and this is the actual function this is the function that is going to take the input Let's take a look with this simple test. Now, as you can see, I'm testing quite a few things. Just spaces, then I have symbols, then I have digits, but they're also a string, then I have only symbols. I want to see if I can pass it all. All right, this is a good result. I passed all of them. Now, I just want to uh, focus your attention on this case. This is, of course, an edge case, but here I have only symbols. Now, it's an edge case in the sense that, as you can see, I expect an empty string. And if it passed, it means that I received an empty string. It didn't fail. But if I'm dealing with slugs for database entries and stuff like that, I don't want my slug to be an empty string. So this edge case should be handled. One of the things that I can test, that I want to test, is what if the input is not a string? What if it's a number? I cannot split a number. That thing only works with uh, with strings. So let's try and remedy to that. 
The simple, the simplest thing to do here is just provide an if statement. In this if statement, I want to make sure that the type of this is a string, then I will do everything. If it is not, I will just return, which in terms of a function, it will just return undefined. So if type of title is equal to string, well then, I can put all of this inside the parentheses. If not, I'm just gonna return. Yeah. Okay. Now all my my tests should work the same. I should pass them all anyway. Okay. But now I want to provide a new test. What if I introduce a number? Now I have introduced a number and the expected value out of this number is undefined. Will it work? Who knows? It works. So I passed this test as well. It returned undefined. And this is also a case that I need to manage in my, uh, in my view, in my function, which is basically if the function returns undefined, well, throw, throw an error, throw an exception, do whatever you want. The key thing to take home here is the use of regular expression. Now this one is a very simple case. Uh, I'm just dealing with spaces and uh, characters that are not letters. But um, regular expressions can become extremely complex. But it's always uh, time spent well, in my opinion, to try and learn regular expressions. You will always fail at something. It's always a trial and an error. All right, so very simple, very quick, but extremely useful. I mean, if you are serious about web development, you will find yourself using this script very, very often. Now, what have I learned from this? Well, as I said, this wasn't one of my first projects. It came later on. And the main reason for this is because I really, really held off at the beginning from learning regular expressions. At the beginning, I didn't like them. I just couldn't be bothered. I mean, they're hideous, they're horrible. Thanks to projects like this one, I force myself to learn regular expressions because they are extremely powerful. I mean, let's face it. If you want to become a developer of any kind, software developer, a web developer, you name it, you need regular expressions. So yes, from this project, I really started to get serious about uh, regular expressions. And so should you. Well, this is the end. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like so that more people can see it. Make sure to check out the other projects that I'm going to be doing uh, in this video series. I consider them uh, important enough to share them. And if any could be of help for you, I'd be extremely happy. As always, stay tuned for more. Bye bye.